Um, thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, I'm Asan Bhak, just like um, and I'm, I'll be talking. It's a little bit, I guess, a bit different than other people that other people have presented. Um, so it's not really particularly about fake news or misinformation, but rather we are presenting it as a case, like Instagram should be studied for social activism, just like uh, as compared to other social media platform. So formally starting, yeah, so the title of the talk is like screenshots, symbols, and personal thought. That is like kind of summing up our findings. And then eventually our message, like the role of Instagram for social activism. Um, so yeah. Um, so first of all, like, uh, let me go a little bit in the background on um, what social activism is in general. Um, so social activism is like any individual person who is working towards uh, bringing a social or political change in a society. Um, it could be motivated by any factor, but we will just look at this major um, like or abstract uh, definition of it. And in general, uh, about from social media, like there has been a lot of work or research that has been studying social activism, um, mostly on Twitter or uh, on Facebook. Uh, and then some of the common examples that like are like quite often discussed, like Arab Springs, like all the revolutions in 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 Middle Eastern countries, they started and then like social media played like a significant role there. Or some other social movements like Black Lives Matter in the U.S. Like social media has been very uh, proactive to promote this thing, and then also like to raise the awareness. It actually goes like beyond the borders where actually it's happening. Social media can act as a platform like that can give like. Uh, almost like virtually unlimited outreach um, and then message can cross the boundaries. So this is like why social media and social activism are um, very much um, going uh, along with each other. And then with every day, like we're getting new, newer and newer platforms. So it's more important for us to go and see like how people are actually using those platforms to uh, for social activism. And one of those less, lim less studied platform is like um, Instagram. So in, in general, like Instagram is definitely younger platform than Facebook and Twitter. Um, and it's also like a different niche oriented, like people on Instagram are mostly focusing on so, like uh, posting photos or videos as compared to Twitter, like where you can just write a small text and then you can just share it. So it's a little bit different modality there. Um, another important thing for uh, going towards newer platform and also particularly in Instagram and it is like associated in general uh, with um, younger generation, like Generation Z. So Facebook in general, like the generation like who is using, who was using Facebook more often is not really on, uh, on, on Instagram. So all these factors. And then uh, another important consideration that we actually, uh, I will show in like next slides, like where we form the hypothesis are based on the interaction modalities. So I will just take some comparison with, with Twitter. So on, on Twitter, like people can retweet and those are like generally well-studied uh, interaction modality when people are studying like polarization or like, you know, like information uh, diffusion in the networks. So like retweet networks are very common one, um, but that's not the case on, on Instagram. People cannot really share things. So there's no functionality like that. Um, another thing that is coming with the exposure is um, that depends on uh, on the interface. So most of the other platforms, like you can actually let spend less time and then see more content. While if you're looking or like if you use Instagram, you would see like you open an app on the mobile phone and then most of the time you will be able to see just one post at one time. So that like significantly reduces the exposure as compared to the other one. And then there are some other virality measures, like you cannot really see like how many people share, like because there's no sharing functionality. So you cannot really see how many people have posted the similar content. So there's like these kind of things that are kind of counterintuitive for like when you talk about something that you have to use or share information at the larger scale. So we look at these things and then we will form our hypothesis and then eventually at the end of the paper, I will be talking about like how people actually go across these things and they share the content so that maximum people can, uh, can use it. So, yeah, so, and then another important thing, like I'm currently based in Hong Kong and then like in 2019, we had a, a lot of protests going on in Hong Kong. So we got like a very uh, good use case to study the protest uh, 
um, through Instagram. And because also one of the reason for choosing Instagram was uh, like Instagram is one of the most popular um, platform used in Hong Kong as compared to Twitter or Facebook. Um, in general, the protest started in like June 2019 and then they carried on like for a longer time. And there have been uh, like different rallies or protests within that period. The two protests that we particularly focus on are the one that happened on 9th of June 2019 and also the one second one in this series was the 16th of June. Um, so these are two main uh, case studies where we actually go into detail. To, so to start with, like our hypothesis are like the first, like the people is related with the social activism is like the people who are actually protesting um, offline, like actually going to the protest places will have higher exposure or like higher activism score um, on, on their online social media post uh, than the people who do not go to protest. Um, similarly for hypothesis two, we have like the people who are going to the protest, their network will be sharing more protest related content. So they will have the higher exposure, like they will see more posts related to the protest as compared to the non-protesters. And then lastly, we will see the, uh, we look at the um, engagement for the protesters in the, for the posts in the protesters network would be higher for the protest related post as compared to the non-protest related post. So these are the three hypotheses that we set up to further our case that Instagram is, of course, a valid platform to study social activism. And then later on, we'll go towards the actually the content analysis in terms of the images. Um, to start our data collection, uh, Instagram uh, does not have any particular API as, the, as Twitter has. Um, um, so basically what we did, we searched for hashtag using uh, related with protests, both in English and Cantonese language. And then we also filtered the post with geolocation and also the protest time and like where actually the protests were happening, specifically those uh, geolocation with latitude and long longitudes. Um, and then we find protesters who were the people who were posting the content from the locations of the protest within the protest time period. And then the people who were not posting from the um, uh, geolocation of the protest, but elsewhere in Hong Kong, but still related with the protesting. And we consider those people as non-protesters. Um, and then for, we have two set of protesters, one for first protest on the 9th of June, and the second one was for the uh, 16th of June. Um, and then for non-protester, we had like 42 users. Eventually we also collected their the, the people that they follow so that we can ever set, uh, test our uh, exposure hypothesis. Um, so for all of these users, we, would, we, we were able to collect at least 50% of their um, network. Uh, for some users, we couldn't collect because uh, some of the users actually keep their profiles private. So we cannot really um, scrap those data. Um, and then we also, another critical thing is like, we downloaded the data, we anonymized it, and then we, deleted the raw data so that uh, to keep it um, to not get into any trouble and also like research at this and all these kind of things. Um, and then, yeah, so then once we have this data, um, then we go and test our hypothesis accordingly. Um, so the first thing like for defining social activism, what we do is we consider social activism as a, a ratio of posts that are related to the protest as compared to the posts that are not related to the protest. That is like for an individual user. And then we sum up so for all, for both the protesters and non-protesters um, as the average score for within the group. And then we can see like the score of, uh, for, for protesters is significantly higher than, um, than non-protesters. So it like, uh, it supports our first uh, hypothesis that the protesters usually have like higher um, social activism. So they're more posting, they are also more active on social media and they are also present in the um, offline locations. Um, then going towards the um, second hypothesis was the, the post that the protesters will see in their network um, will be more uh, protest related things. Or the other way be like their network will also be posting more protest related photos. So we look at the standard definition of exposure is like you are Exposed to certain um, quantity or certain thing for a certain period of time. So in this case, we actually consider it as one day period. So 
we look for one post over over 24 days um and then the exposure would be defined as like the number of protest related posts over all the posts that the user would see that would be the exposure for that user um and then you can see like the figure on the right actually shows um the absolute frequency of the post and then the middle uh the picture on the on the on the left um it shows um it shows that the exposure for the protester for P1 and P2, like uh, for the first protest and the second protest, like blue and the red, is significantly higher than the yellow one that is for the non protesters So the people who are going to the protest, actually their network is also very much active uh, posting about the protest related things. Um, and then lastly was the people, these the, the, the people who are going to the protest or protesters, um, they would see higher engagement in their networks protest related post so in general uh the engagement on, on on instagram is being measured by likes and comments and comments are although like not so much common on on, on instagram mostly people usually just like the posts um so then we can also see like on the uh ninth like the first protest was on ninth and the second protest was on 16th of june um so there's one thing is like there's significantly higher uh, engagement around the protest days, but one significant difference that we observe is during the first protest, um, um, the post, the, the engagement actually got increased after the protest day, like on the 10th of June, the engagement got significantly higher than actually the first, the day on the protest or before the protest. However, for the um, second protest that happened on 16th of June, the engagement was higher on that particular day. Um, so we we do not really have the exact causal analysis for, for this difference, like why for first protest, the engagement was higher after the protest, but for the other one was on the day. Um, what, what we believe, like the second protest was believed to have like 2 million people from Hong Kong actually going and participating in those protests. So that was uh, like why we think like there could be like in, in advance or like more pro preemptive engagement on that on that protest. Um, so yeah, so this was like overall summing up like our hypothesis and then showing that people actually are active online and also offline. Um, secondly, we were looking at the content or image based analysis. So what we did was um, I will just uh, go to the uh, analysis. So we had like 38,000 images. What we did, we picked 1,000 randomly selected images, and then we also use Azure API to uh, automatically detect tags, categories, and like based on different objects. Um, and then we further augmented those tags with manual uh, annotation. In total, we were able to find 735 tags uh, of different objects. Um, and then we use those tags to actually define the themes or uh, main categories, like what people actually talk about or like what is the content. So some of the interesting thing that we found is like people actually use screenshots, written text as image to further their slogans or just to share, reshare something from the other user. So just like at the beginning, I said like people cannot really share on, on, on Instagram, but what is the workaround that people are using is actually they just take a screenshot of other users post and then they reshare it as a new post. So that was something very interesting. Um, and then also people were using not just the images, but they were writing the text and then sharing it. Um, and then also symbols were used quite often like helmets, umbrella and mask were like pretty common during Hong Kong protests with representing protesters. Uh, and then people were using those things to uh, further spread the uh, activism. Um, so yeah, so this was like uh, more of the um, things like how people were doing. And, and to conclude, like what we found out, like first thing is like online activism translates to the offline activism. Um, and then also the, the, the sharing functionality or the exposure is limited apparently in terms of interacting with the with the content but people find the workaround to do it and they use like screenshots one of the thing that people do it quite often and then lastly while people cannot really talk about a lot of things but they look for symbols or like their offline activities and then they try to relate them with the protest related narratives and then they spread it to the um on on, on social media 
So these were like our findings, how people actually use uh, Instagram for, for social activism. Um, yeah, so that's, that's almost it. I'll be happy to take any uh, questions. You can just write and then see.